Now, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Another Swiss 001 video. Yeah, welcome back to Science 001 or something. Um, today we're back in the flight simulator. You know, flight simulator fun with Swiss 001. And as you can tell, we are not in any plane, but we are actually on board a Concorde. Let's just go ahead and fly this plane here. Yeah, uh, one of the fastest passenger plane that ever existed. Uh, you know, top speed of like Mach 2. The only plane that was like a little faster was the Tupolev 2144. Pretty much the fake Concorde version of this plane, but you know, that's uh, another story. Oh, we that was a, a tail strike. Okay. Now, obviously, we all know the story of the Concorde. It's dead now. We cannot fly supersonic in commercial aviation at the moment. And well, yeah, since, since this is a really big topic, there are aircraft manufacturers like Boom working very much on a resolution to bring back the, you know, supersonic commercial air travel. You know, with the Boom Overture, for example. You know, they're very busy designing somewhat of a modern Concorde. Uh, uh, which is very interesting to design a plane that can actually fly supersonic, right? Uh, but honestly, in my opinion, you don't really need this kind of delta wing design, thick afterburner engines or anything to fly supersonic, right? Let's today test if we can get something like a conventional commercial plane to fly speeds of Mach 1, which is uh, the speed of sound. Maybe we could achieve these kind of speeds in planes like this, right? So let's go ahead and, uh, well, leave the Concorde. We're actually flying at Mach 1 right now, and we're not flying anymore. We're in... Oh, I think the flight simulator just crashed. Okay, it's back. <clears throat> Alright, now then, before we start testing, we obviously need to find out what plane is currently the fastest. What passenger plane, at least. And that is the 747-8i. That one can achieve a speed of Mach 0.8. Eight, six. And I just want to mention again, Mach 1 is the speed of sound. So we only have Mach 0.14 left? Math 001 for sure. Let's see, maybe we can even get some engine upgrades for the 747-8 and fly this plane supersonic. Alright, welcome aboard the 747-8, the most modern and the most biggest and the fastest 747 there is, and apparently the fastest passenger plane that is in service right now. Now, what I know this plane for is uh, being able to stop on short runways. Ways? Is that a good thing? Yeah, let's go ahead and actually land this plane before we do anything else, because I haven't landed the 747 in a while. It is a little bit weird to land this plane as a pilot, because, you know, again, cockpit is on the second floor. But this plane flies nicely. The 747 is incredibly easy to fly, actually. Uh, I just don't really make smooth landings with it for some reason. I mean, maybe that's because of the second floor thing. <clears throat> let's go ahead and get this landed, though. There we go. Nice. Smooth landing. Acceptable. Let's go ahead and especially stop now. There we go. We're losing a lot of speed, as you can tell. And, um, actually, that was very close to overrunning this runway. But as you can see, we were able to perfectly stop here at Le Mole Airport. 1,200 meter long runway, after all. Not the longest runway. And we were flying at a very fast speed. 170 knots. Jesus Christ. But we did a smooth landing, actually, though. That's uh, a good thing. There we go. Looks nice here, especially with a tilted landing gear. Okay, now since that is now sorted, let's go ahead and reach some speeds. All right, let's go ahead and actually fly to like 14,000 feet. Here we go. Thanks to cheese, we can easily do that. And uh, establish some speed especially. Let's go ahead and put the engines to full power and just see how much speed we can actually go ahead and generate from the start. Just like that. Okay, let's go into the settings. And here we can actually have a Mac counter as well. Good old Mac counter is back. Something else I'm going to definitely enable is uh, remove flying services when over speed or G limits. Basically what that is going to do, I mean, it, it describes itself quite well, but you know, we're basically going to fall apart if we go too fast, which we're not quite doing yet. We're right now at 0.5 Mach. Half a Mach, high, half the speed of sound. I mean, that's incredibly fast still. We have to say that. Uh, but, you know, according to uh, simple flying, this thing can fly 0.86. So let's go ahead. Now, these very powerful four engines here are pushing us forward. We're now already at 0.63. And, uh, well, we're starting to speed up a little bit. We're actually now at 0.73. Not quite yet at the maximum speed, but, you know, we're speeding more and more. All right, but now Mach 8, 6. Things are looking good, but we're actually starting to reach the overspeed limits here on our plane, but we're actually able to gain more speed than uh, our overspeed. So let's just go ahead and enter this red zone. For some reason, though, we actually don't have an overspeed warning. Oh, we do. That's what the overspeed warning sounds like. Yes, it kind of sounds like a McDonald's microwave. Okay, let's go ahead and, you know, acknowledge that and ignore that, especially because we're already at point nine or Mach. Uh, wow. <laughs> Maybe we're actually able to reach supersonic speeds, damn. Okay, but maybe though it is, we are barely gaining speed here. 
Um, but I have a trick to help. Now, obviously, this is not really uh, how it works, but we can go ahead and just descend a little bit, lose a little bit of altitude, and when I mean a little bit, I mean quite a bit. That is gonna, of course, <laughs> make us faster. So, yeah, we are able to hit supersonic speeds with just a normal 747 by using a little bit of uh, tricks of descending while running the engines at full power. I mean, that's pretty much how every plane could reach supersonic speeds, genuinely, by just uh, doing a little bit of a skydive. Yeah, well, it's called nose dive, but you know, it's really the same thing. Okay, we're now flying at minus 6,000 vertical speed, something apparently the fuselage is capable of handling. But let's see, how fast of a speed can we reach before we actually start getting some damage on this plane? Okay, see, the thing is actually, we have a problem. Since we are losing altitude because we're descending, we're also losing Mach because we're obviously getting closer to the ground, and so our ground speed decreases at the same time. So basically, there's no way to actually gain supersonic speeds here with this plane. What we can do actually is go for a full-on nosedive, basically crash this plane. Uh, we may or may not actually fall apart while doing that. This is a way we can gain some more speed, I guess. Alright, there we go. 0.99, and we are now at one Mach. We have reached supersonic speeds with a normal 747.8. And maybe this test is a little dumb. I've just noticed that. And now we've actually fallen apart as well. <laughs> Whoops. Alright, <clears throat> 747.8 has crashed, and uh, this is really a stupid test, but, um, you know, I have a way to make this even more stupid. I have an upgraded version of the 747, which has some bigger engines on it. Alright, then, we'll come aboard the 747-8 again, but a special version. Uh, yeah, this has, uh, some tuned engines. Let's check them out. Alright, let's actually, I I've, I've, I've done a lot of tuning to them. This is what, basically what would happen if you put, like, four GE90 engines on them. The biggest jet engine in the world. Or maybe six GE90 engines, to be precise. Alright, this plane is obviously a lot faster. Jesus Christ. Oh, that was the voice crack as well. Jesus. Alright, so maybe let's do the simple test. Go to, like, 40,000 feet or something, or maybe 36,000 feet. Turn the autopilot on. There we go. Looking nice. Let's turn on the speed mode as well. And uh, let's set the target to, uh, how about one Mach? And let's set the target of the autopilot to, how about one Mach? <laughs> <laughs> so if it works. This plane is definitely going to be able to reach this kind of speed with these engines. I've done some serious upgrading to these. All right. Mach 1. There we go. We're here. All right. Now engines are running at full power. Gaining that speed. We're now holding altitude. Let's see if the plane's going to fall apart, actually. Maybe we can even outdo the Concorde and see if the 747, if the engines were properly set, would be able to reach these kind of speeds. Uh, plane has not fallen apart just yet, but there we go. We have reached a mock now, and uh, but that's it. <laughs> That's literally all we need. All right, but you know what? Let's go ahead and keep the engines running at full power and see what kind of speeds we could even reach further than that. Okay, now we're actually stuck at 1.07 Mach. Uh, nothing's gonna happen. Uh, let's maybe see if we can get a little bit higher of altitude. That will actually increase our Mach speed. Maybe we can outdo the Concorde indeed. Uh, it's probably not gonna happen. All right, let's go for a nose dive as well while we're at it. Come on. Full power. Everything's good. And we're entering a little bit of a nose dive. So far, the plane has not fallen apart, so that's good. And uh, the ocean has turned into squares for some reason. Alright, getting faster and faster. More and more speed, but no way we're gonna reach 2 Mach, right? <clears throat> yeah. Okay, this has been a pretty stupid test. Of course, the 747 is not able to reach supersonic speed. The other structure of this plane will just won't be able to handle these kind of speeds, right? We'll just fall apart, or the plane will stay alive for like two years, and then it'll die. So that's it for the 747-8, as you can see. So yeah, guys, thank you for watching today's video, and I'll see you tomorrow. As always, good night.